Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we've got my little Corolla in here and we're going to be teaching you guys how to spray over the bare plastic parts. So this is a 2014 Corolla and all of the bare plastic parts are really starting to look a little worse for wear. Here in Australia and especially Western Australia we've got a very high UV index and those UV rays are not kind to bare plastic. So yeah, those of you in Australia will definitely know what I'm talking about. And look, they're, they're just starting to fade down a bit. Look, this, this uh, mi the mirror bases are worse and there is only so much that a coating of armor oil or plastic rejuvenators can do. They do improve it, but they just don't last, if you know what I mean. So they soak into the plastic. So that's another thing I do recommend. If you have done armor oil or any silicon based or any oil based um, rejuvenators on your plastic parts give them a really good wash down before you do go to paint them because those oils will possibly cause delamination but yeah as you can see here these kind of parts they're just not looking that great look it's, it's not absolutely terrible yet but things like this so these wiper arms here they're bare plastic and to me they just don't look that great. Even this scuttle panel, I'm gonna do this scuttle panel. So what you wanna to do to start off is make a bit of a plan, decide which parts you're gonna take off the car and which parts you're gonna leave on. If you're unsure, sometimes you're better off just masking some parts up. As long as the masking is done properly and neatly, you can still get some very good results. It's probably better than going busting those parts and having them not fit properly or warping them and bending them and you're always going to look at that. And, and a well-masked part can look better than a broken part, obviously. So what I've decided to do on my car is I'm going to prime. I want these parts here, because if you look at them, they've got like a, a very fine textured finish to them. So I want to sand these down, I want to plastic prime them, and I want to two-pack prime them. So yeah, as I say, you want to sort of plan what you're going to do. Now look, these mud flaps here, I'm actually not too bothered if they've got a slightly textured finish in them. If I wanted them to be fully flat, I would do the same thing. But as I say, for down there where the, where the mud flaps are, I'm just going to do some plastic primer and then base coat and clear coat straight over the top. So they'll be fine. Um, again, I might just go plastic primer. I don't wanna get involved in all the sanding of the, these mirror bases. So I'm just going to go plastic primer and then paint straight over these mirrors. But as I say, these are a nice big flat piece. They're something that I look at every single time I jump in the car. So I want them to look as good as possible. I'm also actually going to do these window frames. So this is actually some tape, which to me, it, it looks okay, but I would rather some nice two pack base coat and clear coat over the top of that. So this video here is just one of what's probably gonna be four or even five part series on the blackouts on my own little Corolla. So look, in this video here, we're really gonna be mainly focusing on these door frame moldings. So these are the ones that I was pointing to before that go between the two door frames and the windows. And yeah, look, so look, this is one of those things that I probably could have sanded flat like this, which is what I did. I started off with some 320 grit and then I just went over the edges. I probably could have, if I really wanted to, gone through the grades, finished it off with something like 1200 grit and then plastic prime and painted straight over the top of. I know that I could have done that and had good results. But for what it was worth, I just wanted to put some primer on it and then I'll be able to sand it back dead flat. Now I'm giving you guys a look here at a couple of different plastic primers. The couple of different plastic primer types you've got. So you've got your 1K plastic primer, which is that Protec one, and then you've got your 2-pack one. So the 2-pack one actually gets mixed with a primer surfacer, as you can see here, VOC non-stop primer surfacer, which is what we call here in Australia a wet on wet primer. So you spray it down and, well not, well it's actually literally still wet, but you can see there on screen, wet on wet plastics with 5% reducer. So that's a mixture. So that's actually what you guys in America would call a sealer. But yeah, here in Australia, we call it a wet on wet or a non-sanding primer. But as I say, you could also use the 1K plastic primer. And look, it's actually really great stuff. It's one of those things that I really do trust, 1K plastic primers, as long as you get a couple of good coats on them. So it's really thin 
And I actually had somebody leave a comment on one of my videos recently and they put it perfectly. They said, it's basically like super glue. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually a really perfect way of putting it. Like your 1K plastic primers are like super glue. They just really bond to that plastic really well and they just stick to it really well. And then what I did was left it overnight. So at the very start of this video, when you saw me talking in front of the camera, that was Friday morning at like 6 a.m. So I start work at eight o'clock. So I actually came into work a couple of hours early to get a bit of a start on my own car because the Saturday was the big day that I planned on doing the roof in black, the wheels and all the, the plastic parts on my car black. So yeah, it was one hell of a day, but that's why I got a head start and got the two pack primer on those door frames on the Friday morning so that they had time to dry overnight. So I did my full day's work. I started my day's work at eight o'clock in the morning and then I came in on the Saturday, which is when you saw me sanding the parts down and they really didn't need that much prep work. It was literally just hand sand 500. That's why the prep work stayed really did go by quite quickly. And then yeah, after that, because it had been sanded down properly, all I needed to go was base coat clear coat. And that was pretty much it. That's what you just saw me doing then. It was just two coats of solvent based base coat and then two coats of clear coat. For whatever reason, that little corner piece that you see parked up and next to these door moldings, it just had one million little bits of dust land in it, but I call that a win. It's like that was my little static uh, attractor, like in the rest of the entire job. I don't even reckon the whole roof had that many nibs in it. In fact, it didn't. These door frames, there was one or two nibs in these door frames, but I say, very nice and glassy and all the wheels obviously you're not going to really be buffing your wheels and the rest of these parts off the gun no buffing required and yeah the rest of the car was pretty much off the gun all i ended up doing was the line where i had the black to the red thank god though because the clear coat that i use it was a scratch resistant clear so quartz crystal clear and it is as hard as a rock to buff. And I mean, it just took forever and ever. And I'm talking 3000 grit. You finish it off with 3000 grit and it just takes forever. You think you're done and then you give it a clean down and there's more sanding scratches. So it was one hell of a mission, but I will actually be taking you guys through the rest of this job in future videos. So be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And yeah, fair to say I had a great time doing this job. This is where we got the car to on that weekend. So as I said at the very start of this video, that was the Friday morning, spraying them was the Saturday. And what you see here is where I got to on the Sunday. So there was a few little finishing touches that I did need to do, but I thought that was a pretty clever little uh, addition. You know, so those roof gutter rail moldings were like a plastic, they're like a really flexible plastic or maybe even some sort of a rubber, but I think plastic. Thing. So what I decided to do there is because they're so flexible, if I had have gone two pack clear over base, then I reckon it would have started flaking. So all I did was gloss black aerosol can. I sprayed it in my backyard. I put it on two boxes, put them on two boxes, aerosol can, bang, bang, and they looked apart because as you saw before, look, the gray just looked terrible. If you ask me, look, and yeah, all you needed to do is look at the before and after, and you would agree. Compared to what we've got now, and for the sake of a weekend's work, yes, it was one hell of a weekend's work, but I mean, what an upgrade. Also, just quickly, those spray suits should be in stock in February. So I do apologize to those who have been waiting for more Gunman Edition spray suits, but they will be in stock in February, supposedly. We hope this time. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested. All that aside I'd just like to say a big thanks for watching and that is enough to support the channel but as I say if you'd like to go the next step then be sure to check out some of that merchandise. Thanks for watching and until next time get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.